Okay, so we're going to be talking about top tasks for federal business developers. Um, and really, I just want to remind you what I, how I describe business development, because I, I see this get discussed in different ways, but it's such a simple thing for those of us in the small business world. Business development is about learning uh, all about an agency, right? You need to learn about an agency, find and develop relationships to identify opportunities to pursue. Um, and so sometimes those opportunities, you find them and you do a little qualifying but once they're qualified as, hey, this is a great opportunity for our company, it goes to the capture phase. And so that's that transition between business development and capture. Um, we're going to dive down into that. I think I already talked about this. And um, here, I'm just going to skip. The one thing I wanted to keep here before I go anywhere else, when I talk about business development, and actually, let me switch over to my other slide. When I talk about business development, um, I tend to talk about it at the agency level, which is, let's call it a middle level. You can go up and think about business development at the uh, department level. So I'm going to target the army and I'm going to be going into the army for one of my customers. Well, I'm going to start at the army level, which will lead me to the agency, or in their case, it's called commands, like major commands, et cetera. Um, I'm going to lead down to the commands, but then you can go down to the program office as well. Business development and capture these kind of uh, skill sets that you develop. They can be done at the smallest level or the largest level. Um, and again, when we talk about business development, it's about gain, gaining agency knowledge. Um, I want you to know an agency better than they know themselves. That, uh, and this is so doable, right? If you think about the army that I just said, um, inside the army, you've got somebody working, or let me use the Navy for a second. If you've got somebody working in Nav C, that's what they know. In fact, if they work even further down in NAVC, they're working at a Naval Surface Warfare Center. They know that warfare center and all the stuff that goes on. There's so much going on in their uh, warfare center that they barely know what's going on in all the other warfare centers, let alone NAVC and the rest of the Navy, the Marine Corps. Um, and so when you think about understanding an agency, we are coming in seeing the forest they typically are a tree or they're looking at the trees, right? And so you can gain a lot of uh, insight into an agency and then know it better than the very people you're talking to. This allows you to be able to piggyback conversations off of one person to another. You can even uh, share information, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, the second thing is building those agency relationships. When you have those, you're going to be able to uh, move further in, hear about opportunities, which is that third bullet. I'm going to walk through some slides guiding you down that path um, of looking at those. So let me just, uh, oh, by the way, so I got a lot of slides in here. I'm going to skip through some of them because I really want to, I really want to get through to a couple of other slides, um, down here. Uh, okay. So, so, uh, I just had to jump forward really quick. Research is what, um, I mean when I say understand an agency. So business development is about understanding an agency better than they understand themselves. It begins with you understanding, um, their mission. So many contracting officers and, and uh, other buying personnel within an agency complain about us from industry going in, trying to have a meeting and not really knowing what they do. So if you think about uh, Army commands or Navy commands, as an example, uh, you go in and you don't know that NAVFAC does facilities and NAVWAR does information warfare center. So you don't understand what their job is. And each of them have a particular mission that all roll up. Uh, that's why we want to be understanding it. Um, when we understand their strategic direction, the goals and objectives, we can align what we sell, our solutions, right? And I'm here mostly talking about those of us in the professional services and IT services, et cetera, not necessarily product sales. But when you think about um, those type of services, they align to the strategic goals that an agency has, right? Their objectives. So you have a goal up here, you have objectives, and then you have action items that are leading, right? And so um, you want to understand an agency and understand where they're going with their uh, primary goals. And you can see this, and I'll talk about this in a minute, in their strategic documentation. Um, and then the third bullet that you see here is we want to understand their challenges and pain points. There's so many levels we can do this. If you think about a particular opportunity we're going to go after, yes, we want to know about the challenges and pain points. For example, uh, we've reduced the number of people in our agency working on this task but we've doubled the volume of work that's needed to be done. It's like, okay, there's a challenge and pain point around that one particular requirement they have, what we call an opportunity. Um, but then those challenges and pain points should be explored beyond that. 
if that program office has a requirement with challenges and pain points, what other uh, problems are they ru running into in that program office? What about farther up in the agency? What are they running up into? And then the department level as well. You can go and research to find documents that are literally called management performance and uh, management challenges and performance challenges, something like that. But basically the top challenges. Um, when I was helping a customer on cybersecurity, I was able to find DOD's top cyber challenges and I'm able to see what's going on. If you're in workforce development and staffing, things like that, there are HR documents that talk about the challenges the government faces, not just DOD um, uh, hiring you know, new military recruits, but all agencies trying to figure out how do they compete with industry who potentially pays more? Um, how do they attract folks in? How do they uh, help people feel like they're doing career progression? Artificial intelligence is coming out, right? How do we deal with that? Well, if you're in the HR or workforce development space, you can find those challenges being articulated, which allows you when you do sales calls, meetings, to explore those challenges and pain points with that customer uh, and then later talk about how your solution is addressing that. Um, so here are just some of the things you want to be tracking on. And I'll go through fairly fast on this. Um, but you want to look at a, a document that lays out the accomplishments from last year. These are called annual reports. Uh, I already talked about goals and strategies. Um, you want to look into the organizational structure. So when you go in and you're doing business development, understanding an agency, understand how that agency is organized. The Navy, I talked about major system commands like NAVFAC, NAVWAR, NAVSUP, NAVAIR, right? Understanding those and being able to um, understand the mission of each and where you fit. And then I also talk a lot about spending. I just put out an article on the newsletter um, with all the agency, top agency budgets. You could go in there and explore that down to a lower level. Um, so here are just some of the ways that I talk about doing research. You can do screenshots on this, by the way. Just go to Google and learn how to do screenshots if you don't know how to do it. This replay is available. But this is what I do when I do research. I'm going to work with a customer next week. And today is April 12th, right? So I'm working with a customer next week to create a plan to push into the Army. The Army is the top uh, buyer from 8A small businesses in the fourth quarter. So we're planning out their end of the year strategy here in April. So we're maximizing what's going to happen in June, July, August, and September. Um, and we're and their goal is to go into the Army because the Army spends twice as much as anybody else in the end of the year with 8A firms. So we're going to create this plan, um, but we don't just want to go in and, and do opportunity grabbing and respond and bid, right? We want to go in and figure out where they fit um, and just get visibility. So these are some of the documents you can track on. Uh, the agency strategic plan, the annual report for uh, the previous fiscal year. You can look at the um, all sorts of strategic plans like uh, data plans, logistics plans. There's a lot of these organizations within an agency that create their own strategic plans that allow you to understand more about that program office. Um, the budgets are huge. FY 2025 budget is out there. 2024's budget has just finally been approved. So go back and look at that documentation. That'll be hugely helpful. But then industry days, there's all sorts of industry day information out there. And, and when I talk about going into the Army, if I can't find a lot of it on Google, I'll just reach out to the small business specialists. And there's 100 or so in the Army that will be able to find out, hey, did we miss any recent uh, industry day events from this program executive office or from this agency? Tracking on those, uh, that kind of information. And then one of the last ways to do research, and this leads into targeting, is um, USA Spending and FPDS, SAM, going into these three main tools of the government to find out which agencies, which uh, offices are spending, which ones are funding it, which ones are the one with the need. Um, if I go into FPDS, I can find the contracting officer. I often can do that in SAM as well, but FPDS shows me previous awards. And so if I'm chasing that kind of activity, uh, when I look at the army and I wanna go after the 8A dollars that are in the army, as an example, then I'm going to go look in FPDS and say, show me all the Army opportunities that were awarded and show me the um, uh, those done under 8A in my space. Then I will just create a list of all the contracting officers who were tracking on that, let's say in the last fiscal year. That gives me a start to who I want to talk to. And that kind of goes to targeting in a minute. Um, oop, let me come back here. Arrgh. So uh, that's research, right? Understanding an agency. The next thing you want to do, and let me just scoot through targeting again, is you want to get into targeting and build a list of 100 or 200 people, business developers 
should be understanding an agency, finding and developing relationships and uh, finding uh, opportunities that your company can pursue, right? So those three things. We already talked about understanding an agency, a little bit about how you can do it. That's a major task that you should be lining up next week going, how can I do research into the agency I want to go into? Not being paralyzed by that research, but doing enough research so that when I start having meetings, it sounds like I actually took the time to uh, talk or do the research. Um, we call it homework, right? There's this great line out there that says, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. And the way that you can show them that you care is you took the time to understand their agency, where they're at, where they want to go. All right. So when you think about why it's important to find the right people, and this is the next step. By the way, I went pretty fast through this, um, but this is my seven step process for federal revenue success. And so when I talk about business development, it's right here, right? Research, targeting and outreach. Those three are leading to the relationships you're trying to develop. And so in here, um, I already talked about research. And so now we're talking about targeting. How do you find the people so that you can build the relationships? If the second step is building a relationship, you need to find people who will do that for you. And so when you think about the right people, these are the people who will make introductions for you within their agency. They'll talk to you about their agency. We call them focus as a receptivity initially because they're receptive to your phone call. Um, I've got many customers that do this right now where they're setting up a call and they're getting in and able to talk about an agency with a customer to be able to move to somebody else or move further with that person. Um, they also listen to your ideas and recommendations. So it's not just about um, small business specialists, et cetera, but it's program office people. How do I get in and talk to them? And so when you uh, get in and start talking to the right people, you'll be able to shape opportunities. And so business development is about understanding the agency, building relationships and finding opportunities. Those building relationships will help you find an opportunity and shape it. When you start building relationships with the right people, whether they're acquisition or program office personnel, they will lead to you being able to find opportunities and then shape them if they fit for your pipeline. Um, so you can see some of the other reasons why it's important to find the right people. And we'll come back to that. But I want to talk about uh, what I really mean when I go in here. When I go into an agency, let's use the army again, I'm trying to build a list of one to 200 people. Um, it begins with uh, the agency, right? I want to find 50 or 100 agency personnel that I can start off with. I might also look at the SBA, certainly the PCR, the Procurement Center Representative. And you can go watch more of my video and training on that, but the PCRs have oversight over the Army, for example, where I'm trying to go. So if I have questions, I might be able to go to them. They go on my list. And then the last group of people I want to put on my list are uh, winners within the Army. If I'm going into the Army, I'm going to try to find winners who are in my space or complementary spaces so that I can reach out and say, hey, is there a synergy for us to be able to go after stuff? I might reach out to SDBOs if I'm going after an 8A thing to say, hey, maybe you can get a piece of this. I might reach out to other 8As and say, maybe we can go after something bigger together. Um, but you want to build that list of people, one to 200 folks, so that when you start doing outreach, you're able to um, reach a lot of people. And when you're building relationships, every person you talk to, and this is what this slide is trying to communicate, every person you talk to will give you one little nugget of information that helps with the next one. So if you're talking with um, a company that's out there, another 8A that's winning, they're like, oh, you know what? These, this contract specialist is awesome. Or this small business specialist has always been really helpful for us learning about the agency. Perfect. Then you talk to them and they mention maybe a large prime SBLO who helps uh, works with their agency. Oh, you should talk to them. See about maybe subbing with them. Um, all of these people just feed off each other. So um, here's just a quick slide um, where I talk about different roles, but basically the primary ones you're trying to find are business owners in a small business and business developers in a large business, and then contracting officers, program office, program office personnel, and small business. You can come back and watch this. Um, maybe we'll put a link in. I have whole separate training on just finding the right people, but I wanted to just get to this slide where I talk about how do you find the right people? And here, I'm just giving you a fast tip. Keep in mind, I've done almost 500 trainings in the last two years. I have training on each one of these topics that I'm, I'm, I'm pushing a lot of topics into today's 30 minutes just to kind of remind you of tasks that should be done around business development. But I talk about like literally this slide here is a whole separate training all by itself. 
how to find the right people when you're doing business development, how to build those uh, relationships that are out there. And so here I talk about, you can go to an agency website uh, or a company website if you're looking at an industry partner. On there, there's all sorts of people's information. Um, I'm working with one of my customers on uh, EEO, so equal employment opportunity and looking for the diversity offices that run that. Well, doing research on an agency website allowed us to find an entire list of like 75 people in that role across multiple agencies within a department, right? So this is very useful for us. And you can do that same thing. Sometimes you might not find the phone number and email, but that's the beginning of research. You get the name, you can all, always pursue on Google the rest of the information. Um, agency documents, I'm a huge fan of any of those documents I mentioned before, industry days, strategic plans, um, the VA, I put out like a 300 page document on LinkedIn a while back, if that's your target agency, and it has org charts all the way down to the lowest level with all these people in there. It's like hundreds and hundreds of people. And so it's really awesome. Um, but those documents, you can find out who's running or who's leading certain areas. Remember, I said you want to find goals and objectives that you can tie to. Sometimes those goals and objectives have offices or people tied to them saying these people have responsibility to make this happen. Um, I already mentioned you can go to four, five, and six here, FPDS, SAM, and USA Spending. Um, apparently, I didn't put USA Spending there, but DSPS is another great one, right? If you don't know this, every small business, and there's like 300,000 of us, every small business is in DSPS, and generally, you can find the owner of the company right there, which accelerates your ability to develop a relationship with them. Um, you can go into Google. That's one of my favorite places to go. Frankly, I just dive in there first. It's it's very quick for me to search it. Often Google's results will take me right back to an agency website and documents. Um, LinkedIn is a fantastic place to go. I use PEO Digital as an example. They're a subordinate program executive office within the Navy, within NAV War. And it's so really uh, kind of far down a program office, but they're focused obviously on um, digital directive, digital transformation, that kind of stuff. And I can go into LinkedIn and find the 250 or so people who work in that office. And now I got their information. If I decide I want to pursue them on LinkedIn, I could. Uh, I can learn from them on LinkedIn. But then I can take those names and just go out to the Internet and try to find uh, their contact information. But it's a way to find those right people so that I can pick up the phone and start calling them. Um, and then obviously we have a directory. If you don't know this, just go to our website. we got a free directory of um over a thousand small business specialists in the federal agencies, as well as uh, every, like the top 100 large prime contractors. Okay, so uh, that was how to just find the names, but let's talk about like, how do you uh, do outreach, right? Outreach is that idea of uh, picking up the phone and making phone calls. And what I wanna dive to is really two big points you need to pay attention to, because business development is about developing relationships that last a long time that can help you find opportunities. I want you to understand the difference between a great call and a successful call. When you do, you will start building more relationships that will help you find more opportunities. So a great call is one that everybody thought it was awesome. We all liked each other. We got on, we talked, you know, uh, Sally was great. John was great. Everybody said we must come together and talk again, but uh, nothing really happened. Nothing really moved forward. A successful call is one that moves the sale forward. So if I'm looking at um, a relationship with a, a teaming partner, an, an example of moving it forward might be an NDA getting in place or uh, having a spreadsheet that we share back and forth that has two or three opportunities. If I'm looking at an agency, I might be looking for an introduction to somebody else or getting a, a copy of a publicly facing strategic document that maybe I couldn't find. Things like that, right? Next meetings are always good ones to, to move the sale forward. But when you have meetings, and you're trying to build relationships, not just network, you want to sit there and make sure you're uh, um, you're defining the difference for yourself of a successful call compared to great. And so when we do successful calls, we always think to ourselves, make sure we have an objective. Um, so here, that's just understanding your value. Here, I just want to give you some quick outreach tips so you understand this um, as you move forward. The whole purpose of outreach before building a relationship, right, at the start of uh, getting a relationship going, it's not to make a sale. It's just to get in and to schedule a meeting. When you pick up the phone, you're trying to uh, call somebody. You're just trying to schedule a meeting. And when you do this, you're not going to have to worry about wowing them on that first call. You're going to catch them out off guard. But what you really want to do is when you're reaching out to one of those one to 200 people, 
you want to make sure that your um, your purpose for doing that is to schedule a meeting, not to have a meeting. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so when you do that, you can then research them. My advice for you when you're doing any kind of business development is don't reach out and try to uh, research every person, every company you're going to call before you schedule a meeting. It's just a waste of time because 50% of the people you'll never have a meeting with, but you had spent time researching. Um, and then the other thing about uh, outreach when you're reaching out is you want to be comfortable leaving a voicemail or sending an email and a voicemail because these are multiple touches. And in sales, we just need to be touching people and marketing engagements, right? Being on their mind like 60 times. It takes a long time to get going in there. Um, I wanted to switch over really quick because I'm just running out of time and I always end on time. But I wanted to come over here really quick to LinkedIn. And um, in here, in my profile really quick, I just want to show you if you haven't seen this, right? I talk about how, and this will be hard to look at that. I talked about how I've done four or 500 trainings um, in the last two years. Come on. Um, right here on my profile, you can click in there and come in and see all these trainings, right? I start scrolling down and I can start looking at them. I'm giving you a quick level of uh, activity. Uh, I'm actually, I know I'm doing it at a real fire hose pace. Frankly, I'm a little, <laughs> I get a little headache that's throwing me off, but um, I have done so many good deep dive trainings. And so you can come in here and find a ton of them. You can go all the way down. I don't know how many I got, but argh, if I grab that guy and I come down here, you know, we've got 445, right? And if I was looking for, uh, let's just say capture, right? There's 17 different trainings with capture in it somewhere. Um, so you can start seeing it. Same thing with, uh, if I was talking about relationships, right? I don't know if I just spelled that correctly. 15 different trainings. You can go in and see which one. You don't have to watch them all, right? But you can go here, want to build new relationships or how to build relationships that are in there. And then the last one um, that goes with just business development, opportunities, if I can spell that correctly, 22 different trainings on opportunities as you come down, right? Easiest way to find federal opportunities, a, a guide to unlocking set aside opportunities. Don't dismiss all the previous training I've done. It's so helpful to you. When I work with new customers, I'm always guiding them back to this so that they can grow faster than they would be able to grow without me. I can't work with everybody one-on-one, -on -one, but this is why I do the training. So you have it. And there's uh, over 500 hours of training in here that you can have access to. And it's all around federal sales training. So I want to make sure you have access to that. Um, let me just come back here really quick and stop sharing that screen. Um, I did just want to remind you of uh, one thing, give you a suggestion as you move into next week and you're thinking about business development and, and kind of re-kicking your efforts on business development. Three things I really want you to pay attention to. One is um, determine what your target agency is. So the, for me, it's going to be the Army. But determine your target agency. Then make sure you know what you sell. And, and the reason I say this is you want to be focused to make it easy to know which program offices, et cetera, to go into. So for me, the customer I was talking about, they do several things. But ASL, American Sign Language, is the thing I'm going to actually start with. That way, I only have one core competency, and one agency I'm pursuing in, which really focuses me down. Then the next thing I'm going to have them do, and this is the third thing for you, is read the strategic documents that are out there. There is so much good information on the strategic documents. For me, I'll be looking for strategic documents as it lines to um, workforce and diversity. Um, uh, uh, Section 508 is another thing because ASL, American Sign Language, lines to that, right? But what do you want to look for? Understand that and then read those documents. You can do this fairly quickly on Monday and have a good start into pushing into an agency so that you too can go after um, an agency and really drive forward and find those opportunities you're looking to find. All right, I'm out of time. Remember, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. Part of the process is just coming back to the training. I hope I see you on Monday when we come back again. Have an awesome weekend.